Hi, this is Eric with BC Gurus, and this is part three of Web Apps, and uh, this video covers custom fields. Now, uh, you get several fields out of uh, by default when you just create a web app, things like the URL, the name, the content. You've seen some of those in uh, the last video, but chances are if you're using web apps uh, at all, it's because you need to define uh, custom data types, and that's where uh, custom fields come into play. And uh, Basically, you can add as many custom fields as you want to each web app, so you can pretty much store as much data as you need there. And uh, the basic concept is you uh, create your fields, and each field is going to have a name associated with it, and then you're going to have to define uh, what type of data that field is going to hold, be it a, a date time or just a string of text. Um, and then optionally you may have uh, some list items you need to define. So if you're using a drop-down list field type, you're going to need to define the list items that are part of that uh, drop-down list. Now there's a lot of considerations you need to to think about when you're creating uh, these custom fields and that's going to be uh, what user interface you want to provide to uh, the site owner when they're adding and editing their items so uh, a drop down list is is going to supply them with a drop down element for uh, picking that field's data um, versus a text string field which is just going to allow them to enter in arbitrary text and these uh, different field types have other implications as well when it comes to uh, web app search as well as uh, when you're submitting new items uh, as an end user. So for your customer submitted web app items, uh, the type of data and the validation you're going to get will be in part defined by the field type. And we'll show you some examples and get into the details of that. Uh, the only thing is you, you just need to keep that in mind and uh, it's a good idea to go in and do some experimenting ahead of time uh, just so you have a really good idea of all the uh, pluses and minuses of the different field types. And uh, you know, if you're not really sure uh, text box just the plain old string uh, text string field is often a safe choice because it allows a lot of flexibility and uh, you can kind of define some uh, constraints within your templates and when you customize your form uh, for the add and search. Uh, so a lot of the times a string field is a good, safe, basic choice there, but we'll, uh, we'll cover all that uh, when we get into the demos here. So we've got our demo web app that we've uh, just created here, and uh, we're on step two of the web app creation uh, settings, and this is where you define all of your custom fields. Now by default, it's going to supply you with uh, these fields here, and these are just the defaults you get with every web app, and uh, the asterisk next to the field name indicates that it's a required field, so like each web app has to have a URL and a name, release and expiration dates, and things like that, but you can also define those mandatory or non-mandatory options when you're creating the field. So you would just click the Add Field button and that's going to give you some other options over here. And the first thing you're going to want to select is the field name. And so you can really call the names whatever you want, but they should probably make sense to you. So we'll just call this, um, uh, we'll call this just date time field so you get an idea of uh, what we're doing here. And uh, then we're going to select the field type, and this is where you're going to choose what type of field it's going to be. So in this case, we're going to use a date time, and then you just have the mandatory uh, yes or no, this field is required. Now, when you create a mandatory field, that's going to do two things. It's going to first make sure that when your admin user is creating new items that they must supply a field or a value for this field otherwise it won't save the item as well as when uh, you create your web app uh, customer input form basically the form that a customer and end user would fill out to submit a new web app item the validation on that field is also going to kick in and make sure that the customer uh, creates that field or provides a value as well. So that, uh, that field is something you definitely want to think about ahead of time before you create it. But once you, uh, you've got that set, you just create a save or you click the save field button and it will add that to the list. And uh, we'll go ahead and create another uh, field here. So we'll click add field again and we'll give this one just a text string name. 
and we'll select the field type as a text string and this one won't be mandatory and we'll go ahead and click save now sometimes you're going to want to change the order of these fields um, when it comes to actually outputting the items on a list or on the details view the order here isn't really all that important because you can uh, you can manually set that in the layout section but the order that the field appears here is going to determine how it appears to the admin user on the back end so uh, you may want to keep that in mind you can use the up and down buttons here to move the field up and down and that will alter the user interface for the admin. Okay, so that was what the uh, the user interface looked like for the admin when you're uh, creating custom fields. I wanted to show you what it looks like when you're actually outputting uh, the data for those fields on the details page or within your list template. So I've customized my details layout and I've just created a table on the left hand side we've got the field name and on the right hand side we have the field value so the, the built-in item name field you just get that item name uh, the date time field it's going to just output the text of that date in that format because that's what BC uses for dates the data source field uh, you can see here I've I selected the Brent item uh, for the author and because I've used a data source field it's going to create a link that just links me out to the details page for that specific web app item and that's really all you can do with a data source field um, sometimes that's fine other times you want uh, something different so uh, just keep in mind that limitation of the data source field the true false field uh, outputs a one for the checked item indicating it's true and it would be a zero for the uh, for the false option or the un unchecked option so you don't have a lot of options there but uh, you can do some customization with JavaScript if you want to change that the single text uh, string field just outputs a line of text and then the multiple line text field you can see here uh, it's included those line breaks that we had in the uh, admin UI for the hyperlink field um, all we did was provide the actual link uh, location and it's gone ahead and created the a tag that links out there one thing you can notice about this is I didn't have any control over the link text it just used the URL for the link text so a lot of the times if you want to create uh, link uh, data fields you might use two different text fields such as uh, one text field will be the link text and then one text field would be the link URL and then you can kind of manually construct that a tag or the link tag within your layout template so that it formats correctly number field pretty straightforward just outputs the number uh, the list fields for the radio list you're just you're just going to get the text of the item name so there's only one option for the radio uh, list field type so that's what we've got here for the list box we had selected two items so it just separates those by commas um, the drop down list field uh, pretty similar to the radio list and then the checkbox list field is going to be similar to the list box because there's multiple items uh, for each item they had selected it's going to separate those by commas and then for the image field it's going to go ahead and render the image that they selected so um, again with the image field you don't have uh, options to select a caption or really an alt field uh, text so sometimes you need to get a little more creative with your image field and you can just use tech text boxes and then manually construct the image tags as appropriate to fill in the various attributes and stuff so for the, uh, the this is the ad form which is the form a customer on the site would fill out if they wanted to add a user submitted item and uh, this is an optional thing you can do for web apps uh, but it allows the user to submit their own items and uh, we'll cover that in detail in the last video I just wanted to show you uh, the user interface that the different field types creates for that now keep in mind you can customize uh, this form and kind of play around with the different outputs for the field types but this is what you get by the default uh, you can see the date time field the customer is going to get the uh, date picker the image field will allow them to upload a file from their computer there's an additional setting you have to set up in order for that to work and we'll cover that when we cover customer submitted items but you do get that for image fields checkbox fields 
um, pretty straightforward checkbox, drop down list, list box, radio lists. Um, the number field, uh, it's going to provide a text box and they'll be able to enter stuff like that. But if they don't enter a valid number and they try and submit the field, again, they're going to get that default validation that talks about the currency symbol, which may not even make sense for that type of field. You can customize this validation if you're comfortable uh, mucking around in the JavaScript for this, but just know that number fields are going to uh, have that by default. Hyperlink field, there's no uh, special indicator here of what you're supposed to type in, but they would want to uh, type in some sort of a link that would work, such as this. Uh, the validation doesn't really kick in and, uh, and, and do anything here, so you may need to customize the form and provide that. Multi-line text field, again, it's just a plain basic multi-line text field. There's no HTML options in here. However, uh, you can customize this form and turn this into an HTML editor with some uh, JavaScript plugins. Um, text string field straightforward you just get a string of text they can enter and then the true false field is going to of course create a checkbox and then for the data source field again they're just going to get a list of items uh, that you selected for that data source and uh, you don't have to manually create these it's just going to go ahead and pick up all of the items uh, from the linked web app when you create those so this page has the uh, search form for the web app, which would allow uh, site visitors to search uh, based on the different field types and then f uh, output a list of items that match those search criteria. It's very similar to the ad form and the admin UI as far as the default uh, form is concerned. You can certainly customize this to include uh, only the fields you're interested in enabling search for. Um, we'll cover that in the search video. I just want to point out a couple things about this. Uh, you can, for the date time fields, these enable a range of searching to be done. So you can actually search for items between one date and another date. And the same goes for the number field type. You can, um, in the example we had for the real estate listings, they might want, they might want to search based on the number of uh, bedrooms in the uh, in the property and so you could uh, create a number field that holds the number of bedrooms and then allow the user to search for something between say one and three bedrooms and uh, you get that option when you whenever you use the number field type um, so just some things to think about for the search form as well